this next uh, uh, best practice is called the cross docking. So cross docking is basically sending product, right? I mean, you are sending from one dock to another dock, um, you know, from the receiving dock to the outbound shipping dock, skipping all these processes that happen in between, right? So that makes it so much efficient because you don't have to send it to reserve and then again from reserve to active and then pick from active and then, right? It just, you're directly, you know, recognizing the quantity of the uh, case that comes in and then you're directly recognizing there is a need for this product and this many units. So you're directly uh, sending it to the outbound dock and from the outbound dock, it becomes, you know, a label gets applied and then it goes to the a retail store so it's it's much more common in the retail world because in the retail world you know obviously you know i am shipping as a dc i'm shipping to all the retail stores that i'm serving so it's okay if i ship one or two units extra i mean because i'm only shipping the product to my own stores and and you know um, eventually everything gets sold in the store anyway right so i have some flexibility there and also in the retail world at least the processes that drive are called distribution so you are distributing you know from store one store two store three store four all the way to store 100 right it's called distributions it's not like a typical order fulfillment model where there is an order coming in with a order header and an order detail and then you know you process that through the allocation i mean um, waving and all that Right. This is more like a distribution. You're processing this. Still allocations of, you know, for these distributions happen. And then you, you know, pull the product, you know, fulfill, um, you know, uh, do some kind of a put to store process where you're putting um, all the product that's going into a specific store and specific cart and then, you know, moving the cart into the shipping dock. Right. So that's how uh, the retail process works. Whereas with cross dock, you can skip all the things that happen in between, especially so when a case gets received and it has 10 units and if there is a store two that needs exact 10 units and exact um, product, then it immediately gets cross dock to the um, store two. So it goes to the outbound dock, gets a label applied, and then it goes to the uh, lane, shipping lane corresponds to, corresponding to store two, and then it goes to store two, right? You are, you are just eliminating so many unnecessary touches in the middle, so that becomes a much more efficient process. And in the end, you know, uh, you can set up some flexibility also in your cross dock percentage, say, hey, you know, if, even if it's one or two units more, I still want to cross dock it. But on a regular order, even a wholesale order or an e-com order, you cannot do that, right? You don't want to ship more than what the customer has ordered, both in the wholesale world as well as e-com world, right? So, but still you can take advantage of cross dock to some extent because if there is a shortage, I mean, let's say you, you're trying to fulfill an order for 100 units and you had only 90 units and there is a 10 unit shortage and then there is a, um, you know, 10 unit case showing up and you can immediately cross dock that and fulfill against this order for the shortage that you have. Or if there is a replen that is needed, replenishment that is needed in the active location, you could still cross dock that for a replenishment, right? And all this is all, you know, systemically behind the scenes accomplished uh, co something called the immediate needs. There is, you know, you can you can create these immediate needs in the system saying that oh you know i have a shortage or i have a replenishment that's needed right away or i have a you know something else where i need the product so you can create all that immediate need and then you know process that immediate need and uh, push it to the um, you know um, fulfill the order or replenish the location and you know do all that fast so cross docking is something that you want to think about i mean you know again right now you know if you see Obviously, the retail business is going through a lot of transformation, right? That's why, that's why you know, the, everybody, most of the retailers have come up with their own DTC website as well, and they're taking orders for DTC, and their DTC business is growing three times, four times more than the retail business. I mean, retail, I don't think retail is going to go away. I think retail is getting transformed. It's just, uh, you know, there are different things that we would go and do at a store versus just previously we would just go to, we had to go to the store to buy stuff, but now we have all these options to buy online, uh, from so many different brands and so many different, uh, you know, um, uh, niche uh, players, right? Uh, those are the people that so the middleman is getting eliminated, basically. So, you know, the um, uh, the niche vendors are the ones that are winning. Uh, so uh, we are going to still do online, but the store is going to change, at least, you know, as we see. So I don't know how relevant this is or how useful, but if you still have the old school store model that works really well for you, I, I mean, that's very true in the food area, right? Um, you still have to go to Kroger Publix to buy your food, groceries, you know, whatever you need, milk, you know, eggs, whatever you need. So, um, you know, this is something to think about. If you see, hey, there may be an opportunity for me to cross dock product from the uh, receiving dock to the shipping dock so I can, you know, eliminate the touches. I can make it much more efficient and my throughput significantly increases as well. So, uh, so hopefully this is helpful. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and we'd love to hear your um, thoughts and uh, please share your comments and uh, thank you for your time.